On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. As Brighton would say when she gets done drinking. Now I've got my daughter like on point that when she takes a drink of water, she'll drink it. And she'll. It's <sighs> really, every are, time. we are raising a prodigy. That's not, certainly not intentional. It's one of the things she picks oh, up, right? Yeah, well, no, I intentionally no, talked to her. No, he did it. Like oh, okay. one day I came yes. home from work and, and I was like, it's oh, so what'd you guys cute. work on? And he goes, Brighton, take a sip of water. And she does it. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. When I was a kid, my sister got a Furby. You remember those? Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, wow. Little, High yeah. roller oh, Furby. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, it was a big deal. And it would pick up anything you said. And me being like the terrible little brother, I thought it'd be funny if I could get it to say something grass that it shouldn't yeah. say. Oh. Right. Oh. So I got it to Shady. say, shut up, because I thought it was funny. And it, <laughs> it basically ruined the Furby. And I felt horrible <laughs> about it. And it's good to know that, like, that childish something in me, like, exists <laughs> in the world in Heath Oaks teaching his daughter to yes ex- <laughs> let, let out a little... Ah, got my, we got my wife, Jenny, and Zach and Matt in the house for this episode. Hello. What's up? Hello. Hey, everybody. And Zach's got his new shirt on. We got I some do. second yeah. shot. Oh, yeah. looking great. We got some second shot swag, and, and I just got enough, really, to try to test out the clothes and the shirt and the hats yeah. and stuff, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an order of more in and, and and all that and we're gonna figure out we got some you know coming up in a couple of episodes we'll have a a little um uh contest thing put together to give out some swag not to uh oh. you know not not to oversell it or anything but this is cotton blend man yeah, it's got a, a nice v-neck shirt, right? yeah, yeah nice. it's, it's a good shirt i dig it it breathes yeah color me impressed he folks mine would have been if i had a podcast i was getting yeah. a shirt for it'd be like a cheap iron on from See? like cheap or well, something that's, like that's no, that's this where is, i went that's yeah, what i said but, I was like, but not me no you know me. this is good stuff i said babe we can go to like i don't know <laughs> I don't know anywhere crap online. He's like, I want Gap shirts, and I'm like, oh. I want nice shirts. I want to be able to give somebody a shirt that's going to be it's nice. True. I don't want to send them no ironed on this, stuff. This has the Gap label on it. Color yes. me impressed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then Jenny comes walking in with her groceries. She went to the grocery store, I guess, ahead of time. Brought her bag of groceries. I in. went grocery I was like, shopping really? at eight thirty this morning. Did you really? Well, I did. Okay. I've been up since two o'clock. Right. It's so, true. Uh, A.M. So after I got off work, I. We went grocery shopping yesterday, but like I don't know about you guys, but I have to go to like three different grocery stores in order to get all the things every week. So all right, we did Whole Foods yesterday, and I did a uh, regular grocery store today. And I had to bring them in because Texas problems—they will like everyone thing will go bad within <laughs> ten minutes. Yeah, of being in the car, right? What are you? It's what, hot. What, what can you not get at Whole Foods? I thought Whole Foods. Uh, like oh, a lot of stuff. Heath's hair gel, first of <laughs> okay. all. Okay. Yeah. Priority one. That is priority. I, I uh, assume that was just a natural. Yeah. yeah. It is pretty much natural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, certain seasonings. Okay. They don't sell like very many Mexican seasonings there. They don't sell, send a, sell a lot of blended seasonings there. Wow. Also things that you just don't want to spend too much money on. Yeah. Like you can get organic eggs cheaper at a regular store. Well, thanks for nothing, Jeff Sand. Bezos. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like that 10% off for Amazon yeah. customers. I, I, I. Firm belief. I know we need to get to the article here. Uh, I, I think the best time to go to the grocery store is like 8 a.m. any weekday. There's nobody there. There's nobody there. It's the greatest. Well, what's Everybody's great about a, Whole Foods. Yeah, and the cashiers awesome. are fresh yeah. and friendly yeah, and like yeah, pop in. Nice. Happy to see you. Yep, what's great, great about Whole Foods is I took Brighton over to the little play area and played with her while Jenny shopped. Yeah. <laughs> they have a play area? Yeah. I got to start going to Whole Foods. What I am mean, I doing? I yeah. know. I'm doing it all wrong. Spend your whole paycheck. All right. Yes. Yeah, so the first headline on the show where we do headlines and break <laughs> them down and talk about what, what they're about. Yes. Uh, Army to lower divorce rates by training soldiers not to marry strippers. 
Heath, Heath, I want you to know. I like, thought this was a joke when I saw th- th- it. This is the first time, I think, in the history of the show I've had to go back and legitimately check that this guy is a real army chief of staff <laughs> and this is a real thing that happened. Uh, after an exhaustive study conducted by the Rand Corporation aimed at understanding and lowering the divorce rates of soldiers, Army Chief of Staff General Mark A. Milley, a real person, uh, announced yesterday that they're going to start training soldiers to not marry strippers. <laughs> That's where our tax dollars are going. Going in, our no assumption was No offense to the go, strippers. No, 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 no. Of course not. Good people. Going they deserve in, love as well. Our yeah. assumption was that long and frequent deployments were the root cause of the higher than average divorce rates of our soldiers. It turns out, instead, there's a very high correlation between the frequency of a spouse removing their clothes in exchange for money <laughs> and the divorce Wait, rate. Wait, where, where is this article from? I question the legitimacy I know, that's of what this I said. I, I was like, this can't be real. There's no way the army <laughs> chief of staff actually said this. Uh, it's from duffelblog.com. I, I I found it. I googled it. I found a bunch of other sources for it. Okay, so I didn't get it on MSNBC or anything, but as far as I can tell, but there are a lot of sources. The, well, the, the first page of Google is all this. So, but I, there's I a mean, ton of okay. there, there's a, obviously a big issue with with military in general with divorce rates and you know in general our, our society. You know, I, I would say. Um, with yeah, divorce rates. and I'm I'm inclined to think that the army chief of staff, like maybe he has a little bit of sass, maybe like maybe he's a little you mm-hmm. know a little sassy when he says something like this. Why not, oh, Heath? What is your what what's the spin here? Well, I was just kind of thinking, just kind of marriage in general talk, and and also finding that person and what you're looking for, and sometimes um, it's so ironic how what you think you got a you know these people they got the list of what's perfect form and what mm-hmm. they're waiting on and some of these that don't and and i go you know what what is the most important in looking you know with somebody and for somebody in the marriage and in general well so i had i definitely had a list and i had i was you would have stuck a list. to this list for years <laughs> it was very specific um and i and i and i dated many people on this list none of whom i married um, so what I so what I found out was, and someone had given me the advice of, you know, you just need to just kind of like open yourself up a little bit more, date different people, date people off the list, date people different backgrounds, different, different backgrounds, different, you know, people from different walks of life, you know, because because uh, clearly the list is not working, right? Yeah. And so it wasn't until that time, and I dated a couple. It was like before Heath, I felt like I was getting hotter, like I was getting closer to, uh-huh. oh wow, oh this per- we're having more fun, like. He doesn't have the things on the list, but this is more enjoyable. Or, wow, I could potentially see myself with this person. And, and then ultimately I met Heath. And, and Heath, I don't even know if he had anything on that original list. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but what it was was there's just an essence of qualities that are not – it's not tactile. It's not something that can be scripted, written down, planned, arranged, or anything like that. So that was, like, my biggest – I think for other girlfriends who – are you know hoping that they are going to meet somebody my biggest thing for them is like get rid of the list and get rid of the expectation and when you see and somebody what you think and when and and not i'm not just saying like oh don't look at looks i'm saying just style vibe car what, what, whatever the thing is that you find yourself um naturally attracted to be open to the guy that somebody says you know what i think you guys could work out let me set you up and you look at his facebook profile and say nah no, not for me. Like, why? You know nothing about his yeah. essence. You know nothing about his heart or his And you demeanor. won't really know what you like until you do it. That's the thing. Shopping. Yeah. I mean, dating. Yeah. But shopping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it is. It's really, like, if you only ever shop at Target. Like, Target's yeah. great. It's fine. It's got that little dollar thing in the beginning. Yeah. But you don't but know about the play area at Whole Foods. You don't know the play area at Whole Foods. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll never know of the really low prices at some of the discount retailers. You don't know of like, oh, Costco, you can get all this stuff. Yeah. You know, um, it's like if you only date a few people because you're so restricted to that list and you're so particular and so rigid and so I deserve the best. Yes, you do deserve the best. But, but you don't, we don't know, know what the what, best yeah, is. Yeah, we don't know what and, the best is for us. And mm-hmm. I would think the most, um, the interesting thing is, is Jenny and I have talked about it on paper and on the outside looking in. Um Jenny and I would have zero in common uh, of of what would be thought from an outside perspective. Looking in, and you've got a North Idaho um, journalist, the East Texas redneck little town. Um, like, there's not a whole lot of things that go right. Like when I do outdoorsy, I do yeah. um, hiking. He does motorized vehicles. Yes, like, uh, yeah. I mean, there's he a does lot chicken of chicken fried steak. I do grilled chicken. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of those. But you know what we realized is. 
the core essence of our raising, the basic fundamental principles that are really the most important are identical. You know, we, we grew up working hard. We grew up to do right. We grew up by like those, those, um, those basic fundamental things that, that people take for, you know, granted. Those are what was, that's what the core part of our relationship that are immovable. Like, those are things that we were, you know, so look. Well, it's I, just like you strip everything else away. You strip ro- yes. away whatever, you, you know, they happen to be good at or little interests, hobbies, things like that. You strip that away and then you find the core person. Yes. And that's what's most important because on a long enough timeline, people inevitably change. We change every day. Every right? day. Yeah. You're not going to be the same person you were yesterday. You're not going to be the same person you are tomorrow. Um, you have to be, you have to figure out who you are. The Deep core down. principles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, that's what's going to yeah. last. That's because what's going to matter. And when you're getting with somebody and saying, let's do this long term, yeah. that's what's important. See, the thing is, is it's not that, and it's about making those changes with them and being okay with, like, um, you know, she may not love to go race go-karts, but mm-hmm. if I really want to, she's going to go do it with me. I may not love going to just doing this one hike, but I'm going to go do it because she wants to, because that's what I want to do, right? That's that's the stuff that people, that's easy to make. The, the hard thing to find in somebody is those core principles and beliefs. To find them, that's what you got to do. Strip away everything else, and get to that, and try and shop at the discount store, shop at the the Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah, you know there's a playroom in there, and you don't know that. You know, sure. go try some of them, and uh, maybe we can lower these divorce rates in general, and, and be ready to change with people, be ready to move with people through life, and as they go to it. And we'll be right back in a minute on the second segment of Second Shot. He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. Heath Oaks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. To all of my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal and go do it right now. Energyogre.com, promo code second shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. I've adopted hiking. And Jenny has adopted brisket. <laughs> those are like two of those things that we kind of like. I think she won on. on that deal. Yeah. She brisket, won like yeah. a champ. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I get brisket? Yes. Yeah, brisket's great. Brisket, yeah. I've, n- I've, I've never been, to any, been, to, in, been into but, 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 yeah. any, <laughs> any meats, really. <laughs> yeah. But then if you show up at Heath's parents' house, like you can only not eat for so long before you're like, okay, <laughs> right. I guess Right, I'll there's only so much you can get in East Texas. Well, <laughs> hey, one of the first times, like, look, this is healthy, and it was a fruit salad. You know, I was like, oh, look, get something healthy. And, and he was like, I mean, the way my mom made a fruit salad, obviously, was not healthy. It's got right. whipped cream in whipped there. Cream. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, I was much like, oh, love. It's healthy, it was delicious. It's healthy. Sure. It's healthy. That Texas was like, you guys, salad. listen to, wait, did we ever talk about the pimento cheese that you got for me? No. I don't know. Okay. So we went to this lake trip. I'll make this quick because I know we have a point to get to. Um, we went to this lake trip uh, to a wedding. We're staying at this cabin and Heath went grocery shopping and he's all excited. Like, oh, Jenny, I brought First you. First of all, we're out in the middle of nowhere in Alabama. The only place it was was a Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly. The Piggly Wiggly, Wiggly does Still. not have a lot of organic options. Okay? Still, he's like, I got some, I got some healthy stuff for you. And I was like, oh, cool. What'd you get? And yeah. he goes, pimento cheese, which is literally cheese, but worse. <laughs> cheese yeah. plus mayonnaise <laughs> and crackers. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't know nutrition. Right, I'm you thinking know, it's pimento cheese, it's and got pimento crackers. In there. Yeah, it can't be that bad. <laughs> I get it? I mean, you know, you have the pickle wiggly. I'm in the pickle wiggly. Not a lot. I mean, it's yeah. in South like, Alabama. The nutrient profile of pimento cheese is inherently worse than just regular full fat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's South, like cheese plus butter. South Alabama doesn't source great cheese. You yeah. know, <laughs> it was good out there. It oh, was, was it? It was good. Okay, mm-hmm. I did eat it. He did get some strawberries too. So yeah, I did get strawberries. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's nutrition. Yeah, that grows on a tree. Yeah. The next story we have, uh, and this is. Uh, 
I'll just get right into it. This talented UCLA gymnast achieves a perfect score for epic Michael Jackson floor routine. UCLA gymnast Caitlin Ohashi knew that she was determined to win when she participated in the 2018 Pac-12 Championships just the other day. Uh, just before she began her routine, the announcers announced that she had achieved several perfect scores of 10, but... She needed to achieve a 9.6 or higher on her next routine if she wanted to win the competition. She hit a Michael Jackson uh, bit that she does with a, with a mashup of songs, and she got another perfect 10. It's a Facebook video. It is totally worth watching. It's been seen 52 million times. Go check it out. I think we'll have a link somewhere in the show notes or on the page. Yes. Yeah, that'd be good. Show notes. Or something. Heath, wh what's your angle on this? Well, it, I was I've been um, I was reading recently and and uh, talking about choking about when people choke under pressure and stuff, right? Sure. This young lady did not choke under pressure. This young lady, like, rose to the occasion beyond rising to the occasion, okay? Yeah. But the thing is, is people like her that are super talented at times, they do choke. I mean, mm -hmm. um, some of the best uh, uh, professional golfers in the world, they talk about choking. What happened to them is that they, as the pressure got high, they fell backwards, and, you know, as a quarterback in football, one of the biggest attributes they look for in a quarterback is the mental aspect of it. Like if, if it's the last drive and they got one minute to score, like you don't want to leave the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hands under two minutes left with a score needing to happen. That's the worst thing. He has the he has the um, you know everybody knows him. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance they're going to win. Like and how great to be to be that person that under pressure every time everybody knows he's probably going to hurt you because he's he's going to come through yeah. you're saying if you're on his team you do want him to have yes him. if yeah. you're not you you, yeah, you yeah, want yeah. out so what's the difference between the people who choke and throw an interception and screw up that dance routine when a perfect score's on the line and winning and and how why some of them do and why some of them don't so i think this is mental preparation and maturity um which is something that it's, it's interesting to see how youth athletics is starting to coach with this. We're seeing um, children do meditation. We're seeing children do yoga. We're seeing um, children learn about mantras and positivity and things like that with regard to athletics. But the other thing with this, too, is um, peaking every time. Yep. Like So sometimes we think, oh, the boss is coming. I'm going to clean off my desk. I'm going to do my best presentation or like for me, you know, have my best show. Well, people are watching your show every day. Yeah. You know, the boss could log on any any time and, and watch it. And if you're kind of like waiting till the day that, oh, they put me in as a lead story. Now I'm going to nail it. Well, you're not going to get that chance when the world is watching you because you're not consistently performing at your peak every day. Obviously, we're all going to have off days yeah. and things like that. But you can't be the one who's like, I'm going to mail it in today. And we all know that sometimes we do that. Sometimes we're just like, oh, I'm really tired. It's fine, Jenny. Just go to work and just kind of, you know, get through. And, but when you're doing that, that becomes the habit and the mailing in becomes the norm and the exceptional performance becomes the thing that you only do when you're on this big stage. And she obviously peaked, but I would bet that she peaks all the time. Well, yeah, well, she obviously, that was her... Um it's all the mental choking and not choking is all mental it's all in your head i mean because every one of those people have the talent they're all in that spot some can just let their mental a get a hold of them or not between the top have, and have y'all do y'all know the movie tin cup H who? tin cup yeah sure yeah you, zach <laughs> no tin. okay right zach that got it right write, write write down, down got tin, it. Cup. tin cup how have you, you never <laughs> I mean that's an epic <laughs> all-time I went, movie. I went to film school. <laughs> how do you not? Yeah, how do you not know what Tim Cup? It's like an epic movie. Man, I I don't know. I saw The Sandlot. All right, what other what other sport related okay, epic films Cup. do I need to see? <laughs> Eight, seconds. The program. Eight seconds. The, the program. program. I love the Tin program. Cup. Tin Cup. The program. Tin Cup like is hilarious. Second shot watch list. Here. So 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 in Tin Cup, <laughs> you've got a busy weekend ahead. Yeah, I you do. know, <laughs> in Tin Cup, you know, he just blows it and chokes because he shoots it for the green and it goes in the water. And instead of doing the smart thing and doing a drop and just doing whatever, he got in his mind and dropped another ball, hit it in the water, dropped another and hit it in the water of like an epic like nine stroke over because he just wouldn't take the drop. He kept going for it. Sure. You know, he just let it get like, I'm going to win this thing, right? And that's what happens to a lot of people in a lot of pressure situations is they let themselves get inside their head because the old rule and the old adage is the 10,000 hour rule, mm -hmm. right? Everybody says that's where people become. Um, epic and great at things is 10,000 hours. So if you've been playing the piano since eight years old and I start playing it at 20, okay, and that person's been practicing for two hours, five days a week for 10 years, 
the amount of hours they've got. Everybody says you become above average after 10,000 hours of practice or something, right? Right. So then you take two people who all have 10 plus thousand hours of practice. And they're all coming down to the end of it. I mean, like when you watch a um, um, like a uh, golf, for instance, coming down to the last hole and it's neck and neck, or somebody's got a three shot lead and all they got to do is finish easy and they, you know, crash and burn. They all had the same talent level. They all had the same amount of hours. That one person let their head go instead of just getting up there doing what they normally do, swinging and hitting the ball. They go, "What does my elbow look like?" I need to bring that back a little bit more. Do I gotta make. I don't want to screw this up. I can't mm-hmm. screw. That's in the head. That's going on in the head, and that's not getting their habits down, which has gotten them there. And then they choke. Mm-hmm. And that's what choking is: is they think they get inside their head and get out of their routine, get out of their norm because they start feeling that pressure. Mm-hmm. And, and like that's what you were talking like about this when you talk about the meditation. Bigger than the others. Yes, like in this one spot is bigger than the others. No. Get up there, think about what you always think about and how you do. And, and I think, I believe that meditation and mindfulness is what will help you prepare you for those extreme, intense pressure situations. And that's what you were hinting at a while ago. Well, yeah, because you can't start meditating that day. You yeah. know, you can't get your mind right that day, that one time, the one day that the boss shows up or the one day it's the, you know, world championships of whatever. Um, you have to have a consistent practice so that it feels normal. And where everyone else's nerves are up here, you're like... Even just like you've always been and being your best, just like you always are. And what you got to become, you got to learn how to become mindful, to be mindful that your mind is thinking about things that are different. Like when you go to that board meeting to do that presentation and you do it all the time, but this time there's, like you said, these two extra bosses are going to be there. What's going through your mind is different than before. If it is, it's going to throw you all off. Or if you have that fear of speaking in public. What's going on in your mind? Or is it going on in your mind? Oh, my God, I'm going to screw up. I'm going to screw up. I'm going to do all this. That's what mindful teaches you to do is to when those moments come up, how to recognize it and remove those thoughts from your head. Because if you're, if you're scared to stand up and talk in front of a group of 10 people and you're thinking in your head, oh, my God, I'm going to screw up. These people are going to think I'm horrible. Mm-hmm. That's going on inside your head. That's, gonna, that's what's going to make you choke when you get up there. Mm-hmm. But learning to become mindful is what helps you realize that stop that chain and reframe it with positive things like, I'm going to kill this. Well, and that's why if you if anyone's ever at an event that I speak at or um, am presenting at, you'll never really see me prior to the event engaging with people and chatting and hanging out. Some people can really do that. I feel like Heath can do that. Heath can go out, chat with them, hang with them, and then step up and speak and nail it. I need to be sort of like doing... I need to run through everything. I need to do my breaths. I need to do my little voice exercises, the same stuff that I do before news or before anything like that, because I need to be in the same flow. And then it can't be interrupted or deterred by my own negative thoughts saying, oh gosh, who's in that audience? Oh, wow. Oh, I heard that that person didn't think I was very interesting, or I heard that person didn't think they booked a very good guest. So I'd rather just go in in the zone do my thing and then chat with people afterwards yeah and you know it's just different for everybody it's just a matter of figuring out what what, what works for you but that's a funny thing is that's where a bunch of psychologists and stuff come come really to the thing was is that it, it just was people that would choke were in the ones that were not it was it was being mindful and it was that they all had the ten thousand plus hour rule where they'd all had the same type of talent and all that they just all of a sudden let their own mind get to them and think about the elbow in their swing versus when before they never thought they haven't thought about their elbow since they were in seventh grade right <laughs> you know they learn how to hit how to hit the ball and every you know they haven't thought about that in a long time but they let that get to them or that person that goes hey don't screw it up and they go oh my god am i gonna screw this up you know it's all in their head you guys are totally right and it's funny because i i i'm i'm a big <laughs> I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big choker. I choke under pressure every time. I love it, <laughs> <laughs> and it's always love every it. time. Zach is like every that, time. Great. You gotta, that should be you the name know. of this. No, this just the has name to of stop. This show you is no. Uh, I choke okay, under so pressure let's, every let's time. unpack that a right, little right, right. bit. Yeah, no, no, no. Every every time I choke under pressure. Any, any time it gets rough, I'm 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 the first one to be like, all right, I choked. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, th- I think I think that acknowledgement of, of that you choked is is important to help you understand that you failed and to get better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. I oftentimes I find myself wishing, God, I wish I could just have horse blinders. You know, yeah. not what if what if uh-huh. I didn't know that I'm right in front of the finish line. Well, but and you I'm can't. About to trip. Yeah, but, but but see, you can't. That's the thoughts right. going through. You that's got what right. the meditation that's is what about. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what meditation does is teach you how to be mindful and teach you how to stop that and teach you how to put the blinders on. And it yeah. takes time. And that was what. 
uh, being mindful and learning mindfulness, and that's what I use instead of meditation because meditation has a weird like feel about it to a lot mm-hmm. of people. But the 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 um, app Headspace, you know, walks you through mm-hmm. like some mindfulness, and mindfulness is just learning your own thoughts and your emotions and all of that. So. Um, I hope that um, we can take a little lesson from this young lady that go out there and do you, be who you are. She was confident in it. She went out there and nailed it. And like under all the pressure and all the setting the bar and she did it and she did it better than she probably ever had done it. And I, um, I, I, I appreciate that. Like I respect what she did. You know, like she just owned it, yeah. nailed it. And so I'm hoping that maybe you can be a little bit more mindful and go out there and nail it and own it on the next time that you, you need to. And we're going to be back and talk about the group and all on the third segment of Second Shot. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people, and I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Go pick it up today. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCN. Well, we just were continuing the choking talk as my wife was trying to get <laughs> Zach on the therapist chair and yeah. talk about the in-depth on choking. Yeah, well, yeah. I just, I, I empathize so much because that I am also that person. Okay, mm-hmm. so what is it that makes yeah, you, you is making you choke? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I had a get together um, with a friend from out of town over the weekend, right? Saturday. I had met this friend up in Michigan when I was on vacation. And, and it's like my, my aunt's friend's son who happened to live in Plano up till a few yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah. And now he lives up in Detroit and he's a flight attendant. It's great. And he was coming down here for the weekend and said, let's get together. Let's get lunch. So yeah. Christine and I were like, let's totally do that. And the, like, the whole time from from the beginning of it, I'm like, I don't know this person that well. We're going to a place I don't know. A little bit of anxiety holds you up a little bit, mm-hmm. right? And this isn't this isn't like a you know this isn't a public thing. Or I mean, we were in public, but this isn't like yeah, yeah. Not no, but this I'm not counts. No, this right. counts. This all right. counts. This is somebody I don't know that well, right? And so I think about this for like a week. I'm like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna talk about? Where are we gonna go? Did you cancel? No. So okay. we actually go out there the whole time. I'm. Try, you know, I'm playing it cool, but in my head, I'm just like, oh, God, like, this is going to be a mess. Like, I don't I don't know this guy that well. What if he thinks I'm a dork? Not that yeah. it matters, because yeah. I don't know him, but, like, yeah. I might hang out with him in the future. It might be cool. Uh, I, You know, I don't know what he thinks. I don't know his sense of humor that well. I don't have a good read on this person. So we go and we hang out for a couple hours, and I'm, I, you know, three's a crowd, sure, but I'm, I'm basically quiet the whole time, and I'm sure at the end, I, I, I can't help but think he probably thought, like, what, does Zach hate me? What's his deal? Like, why does he? Why <laughs> oh, is he because quiet? Because you didn't he really wanna... engage in conversation. Yeah, you just because felt I'm the just anxiety like listening over it. and like being being back. Yeah, yeah but, like but I'm not. I'm not jumping into let it. Let me ask you, know? you this: yeah. How many times have you walked up to a conversation with anybody, and if you leave that conversation mm-hmm. and you've talked the whole time, you walk away going, "Oh, that person is awesome." It never fails. I mean, I like to think so. So he probably thought you were awesome. Yeah, he probably thought you were awesome. <laughs> listening and stuff when people talk. Yeah. Then that the people who listen are the ones that others always think they are. Is number one, but number two is it's that's mindfulness. That's what mindfulness will do to you because see, you're you are an easy you. I don't see. That's what's funny is you do a very good job at disguising that on the outside because you were very right. yeah. talk. You were very easy to talk with. You're very easy to talk about many conversations. So like it's odd that that you have that that go on because if you were able to, to learn the mindfulness stuff really well. Mm-hmm. And release your mind of like all of that stuff, right? When you're already kind of naturally easily to talk with with people, yeah. From the other people's I like perspective, to think so. yeah. yeah. If you, I, I'm, I'm one of those people. You put a microphone in front of me, I'm great. Yeah. Like, for some reason, like when I'm when I'm doing this, like it's completely reasonable. Whenever I'm in public, I'm like a total social introvert. Like I, I have trouble talking to people. Like I, it's a weird thing. And I think that might be because of environment, because I'm used to this. And yeah, but I, like, you got comfortable with it. Here's or, the other question. Yeah, I, I don't know. Could it also be because this sort of like gives you um, shield the per- and the permission slip to speak? 
like a microphone or a camera or something like that. It's like, oh, you are picked. This is your job. You're oh, being totally. paid to do this. Yeah. So here's the talking stick. Right. Whereas in public, you're kind of like, oh, I'm not sure if they want me to jump in. I'm yep. not sure if what I have to say is valid. I definitely, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, I, I've, I've always loved the, the phrase, never, never mess with the man with the microphone. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Because I yeah. have a microphone. But that, I'm <laughs> telling you, feels good. A little bit of empowerment there. So That's anyway, it sounds tell. like yes. maybe some Headspace maybe. app in the morning. I think pick, a little meditation look, might pick be Pick up Headspace. Start learning the mindfulness stuff. Yeah. Start like doing that. It's 10 minutes in the morning and stuff. I promise you, understanding how that mindfulness works mm -hmm. is, is huge. Yeah. Um, and that book, Ten uh, Percent Happier, is is one of my favorite. It's a good book. Uh, yeah, Dan by Dan Harris. Harris. Yeah, yeah. ABC News correspondent. Happier. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good one. And it's a really good audio book, too, because his his voice is really, he reads it, and it's a really, he does a really good job on Draws the audio book as well. I did um, But we also want to talk a little bit about the Second Shot group. So on Facebook, go to Second Shot. And some people have been, like, messaging going, they can't figure yeah, it out and find, find it. it. And what? They can't figure I it mean, out. I mean, if you can't find it, I don't know if you can be in the group. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, all you got to do is go <laughs> to. Uh, for entry all, all you have to do is go to search and type in Second Shot. Like second you guys, shot. my dad it, like, even found it. Yeah, oh, it, like, really? and my it dad comes, found like, it, yeah. right up to the top with yeah. the logo and all, like, normal. Like, I mean, it's pretty easy to find. I mean, it really is. Right. But when you go, it's a closed group. Mm -hmm. So it's just for the members. And you have to answer a question to get in. Um, like there, there's a one question you have to answer in order to um, get into the group or not. So we're going to keep that group closed because we want it to be a community. Because most of the community in Second Shot are people that are um, positive, that want to do better, whether it's personal, whether it's professional, where it's all these things. And we've got a lot of really strong professional people mm -hmm. in different areas. So like... I see it as a community of people that believe some core principles, as we talked about, that like if, if I need somebody to, if I'm looking for a furniture person, you know, and, and want to know some insight about the furniture store business, mm -hmm. maybe asking that question in there and somebody in there is in the business and may not, they may be in different states where can't help, but maybe give them some insight on how to go about purchasing furniture type thing or yes, car just sales or whatever. Yeah, like-minded people, like-minded people, we want they all want of you to be other. able to connect because we can't. You know, I mean, we're just the, we're the podcast. This is sort of right. like the community of people, so you can talk throughout the week, not just on Fridays when the podcasts come out. And it's been very cool to see as people have been answering the one question to get in, what their feedback is. So we just wanted to kind yeah, of highlight. Yeah, I wanted some to read that. a couple of the. I'm not going to say their names because I don't know if they it, were wanting right. us to to do it, but I'm just going to kind of read what some because the question is is what do you like most about the Second Shot podcast? That that's the question they have to answer. Yeah, and so some I enjoy the content. Um, Heat's unique viewpoints on subject matter. Second shot has been a part of my morning routine for the last year or so, and I can't imagine starting the day without it. I like how honest uh, the next person is. I like how honest you are. You don't try to say what you think. People want to hear. You speak from the heart, and I love that. Keep up the great work, and I love the little tidbits about your family, too. Um, that was nice. And I, I love the tidbits about my family, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another one is the uplifting attitude, positivity, and humor brings it every week. I never miss an episode. Um, learning to look at issues from more than one angle. I enjoy the positive positivity from all the members of the show. So, like, that's what's awesome is you're hearing some of the answers to it all and yeah. how people are having really the, um, um, you know, we're, we're just now getting the, the the group started. So the more and more people that join it, mm -hmm. the more it gets, the more that it will start fueling some of those discussions and stuff that we're hoping with a like-minded group of people that um, it will fuel. It feels good to see Second Shot po pose up, post up more in 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 Facebook. Just come yeah. up randomly. Somebody in there will yeah. ask a question. It's a nice, like, subtle reminder. It's kind of like, um, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible, but no, well, no. what do they call them? Like, Sunday only Christians or whatever. People go to church oh. on just Sunday and play it nice that one day. <laughs> yes. And the rest of the week, they're all about... It's nice to have that reminder throughout the week. It's like, oh, hey, we are a part of this thing that is, like, really neat. And, like, we should remember the things we talk about here throughout our week because we talk about important stuff. Oh, I like that analogy. Yeah. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. It it's, is nice We're not Friday only second shotters. It's oh, and somebody <laughs> called them second shooters. Second, second shooters. shooters. Second shooters. I thought yeah. that was cool. It said, like welcome it. to the second shooters group. Second, <laughs> Hey, second shooters. It's practically a religion. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also had a, a review. Um on Tuesday said uh, on, on iTunes again shaming you all if you've not left a review <laughs> go do it now <laughs> on, your more iTunes, second on your iTunes on your Stitcher or whatever yeah. um, but a great way to start the week the show may come out on Fridays however listen to it on Mondays in my way back to work listen you guys help me um, help put me back in the right mindset 
to go into the offense with confidence and a go get them attitude. I'm very thankful that you guys dedicate your time to help others. Love this show. Uh, Heather Palmer. Thank you, Heather. I kind of like to listen on Mondays too, actually. Do you? Yeah. It's a good way to kick off the week. Yeah. I mean, it's out on Fridays. If I have time on the weekends, and sometimes I'll do my like long walk with Charlie. Wait, Matt. And what was the massive week we had last week? From and and it was from and there was a lot people from from Bahrain. Bahrain. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really fascinating. And I don't know. We picked up a few fans overseas or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's also been interesting. Yeah. It's also been interesting to see what days become popular because Wednesday is super popular right now. Uh, And it used to be Saturday or Sunday. People would. Right, let's do weekend. it on the weekend. But now Wednesdays have uh, really? spiked in popularity. A hot day to listen. To I wonder why yeah. Wednesday. And there were some other states too. I mean, it's you know, it, yeah, it's interesting to see people from all over the country popping up. Yeah, I got a theory as to why Wednesday might be the day. It's a stretch, but hear me out. I I listen to a handful of podcasts. You know, why not? Uh, who doesn't? And yeah. I listen to like my favorites first, like the staples, the ones I've listened to for a long time. Newer ones. Are when I start to hit a little bit of a lull. I start. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go try the some end new ones. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try some new stuff. Finding us in the middle of the week might be a good thing because I yeah, might, might indicate that people it. are trying it. Yeah, yeah. That people are like, okay, I'll give this one a shot. I, I listen to my good stuff, and maybe we're moving up that rotation. Yeah. Well, and that's what that's Matt. That's yeah, why, I like yeah. that. Well, theory. And, yeah, and, and I think it could be because that's why the ratings and reviews are so important because yeah. that's what it does move it up in the in the queue so, so that people when people are see. searching for something, they start finding us more, and that's why. Ratings and review are important because if people go in and they're searching for something, um, you know, to pick them up, that, you know, the more ratings and reviews we have, the more that second shot gets up closer to where those people can find it. Yeah. Oh, it's. it's I don't think your theory is far off. I don't think it's a far off stretch. I don't like to. Th- <laughs> yeah, I like to think. No, so that's anyway. I, that actually, and I kind of do the same thing. I have this. Um, I I've been too. listening to too. this one yeah. about this one. Um, yeah, you've been naturopathic doctor. Well, he does a podcast every day. Oh, really? <laughs> this guy's podcasting every day. I, he probably sees no clients. He wow. only podcasts. But um, yeah, so I listen to that one like every day because I'm just like fascinated by it. And I've been hearing from other people too. They'll be um, like with second shot. They'll binge listen to, yeah. to get all the way back through, and then mm. they get caught up. But they get in the habit of listening to like one every day right. to get caught up and then it only comes out once a week and so then you're like oh i gotta wait you know wait yeah, till Friday yeah. Or whatever. that's right well and that's why th- that's why i think is cool about you know going and joining the second shot group to be around that community all week in a, in a group of community where you can share your your ups and your downs and yeah and the the positive things and also look for advice for things or and, and have a group of people there that um, are all on the same page of yeah. being uplifting, um, wanting to help you move forward. Um, the ratings and reviews put us up there to let people see it. We, I appreciate all the people that take the time to do that, as well as look up the group Second Shot Group on Facebook. Um, and we're also going to get some more of the uh, Second Shot swag ordered and in the way, and we'll get it out to... to uh, We'll, we'll be letting everybody know how they can get their chance to win some. So I should have worn my shirt to shoot the podcast today. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking pics and everything. I could have. Uh, no. Yeah. Could've so, Jenny, where can they find you? So, at Jenny and Chondo TV on Twitter, uh, Jenny and Chondo on Instagram and Facebook. And my website's jennyandchondo.com, even though it always crashes. Aw, <laughs> I'm at, Zapp- at Apple Zackintosh on Twitter, and I'll be on the Facebook page as well, so hit me up Woo-hoo. sometime. Yeah, let's yep. talk. And he folks at Ignorance on Fire as always. Go to the Second Shot group, and there's also secondshotcast at gmail.com. We love you all. See you next time.